one of the two greatest exponents of Italian opera, was born December 22nd, 1858. He joins Mozart, Verdi, and Wagner in a golden quartet of opera's most celebrated masters. La Boheme regularly competes with Aida at the box office. Di Valcra and Lenoze de Figaro remain respectively Wagner and Mozart's most popular entries. Even if you have had only a cursory interest in the long-running Met broadcasts, you will have come upon the work of the fourth of the three I've named, that of Giacomo Puccini. His great-great-grandfather began a dynasty of composers that continued into its second century with the young Puccini's submission of the Capriccio Sipanico as his thesis to the Milan Conservatory. This was followed by his first opera, La Vallée, which was well received, and his second opera, Edgar, which was not. His third opera, Manon Lescaut, premiered February 2nd, 1893, the same week as the premiere of Verdi's last opera, Falstaff. Over the next decade, he wrote La Boheme, Tosca, and Madame Butterfly, three of his greatest successes and three perennials of the operatic repertoire. La Boheme was based on an 1851 book by Henri Murger. It primarily details the loves and losses of two sets of lovers, Rudolfo and Mimi, and Marcello and Musetta. It was discovered early in Puccini's composition that Leon Cavallo was also adopting Mouget's novel for performance. Since the work was in the public domain, Puccini suggested they both complete their compositions and let audiences decide their preference. The contest has long since and is regularly decided in Puccini's favor. Act three is considered one of the most perfectly constructed in all of opera. It concludes with Rudolfo and Mimi renewing their love as Marcello and Musetta denounce their own. It is in act four, however, that the composer breaks each of their hearts as well as each of our own. The dying Mimi pretends to be asleep so that she can be left alone a few moments with Rudolfo. In a melody that will accompany her last declaration, she begins quietly. I have so many things to tell you, or perhaps just one thing, vast as the ocean and as deep as the infinite sea. And then soars in romantic passion, you are my love, you are all my life. And Rudolfo echoes, ah, me, me, my beautiful Mimi. Mimi wonders if she retains her beauty. Am I still beautiful? Rudolfo replies, as beautiful as the sunrise. And Mimi concludes, No, I think you mean the setting sun. Here is that exquisite interplay.
spires as her lover lowers a window shade to shield her from that same setting sun. When Rodolfo discovers that she has died, the orchestra repeats the earlier quiet melody in a crescendo that accompanies a pair of Rodolfo's anguished cries, Mimi, Mimi, as the opera concludes. Arturo Toscanini conducted its 1896 world premiere in Turin. Puccini's next opera, Tosca, was adapted from a melodrama by Victorian Sardou. It is a work of verismo and violence. There is an attempted rape, a lurid murder with a table knife plunged deftly into the villain's perfidious heart, an execution and a curtain-dropping suicidal plunge from a prison parapet. Each of the three leads gets a celebrated aria at the end of each of the three acts. It was an immediate hit and remains a perennial favorite. Madame Butterfly also has a suicidal denouement, but not before the heroine contemplates her imagined happiness in her act two aria, Un Bel D. Butterfly's love interest is the least romantic of Puccini's tenors, an American cad named Pinkerton, weds and beds Butterfly at the conclusion of Act One. He then leaves her swollen with child and goes back to America to wed and bed a more respectable bride. The tragedy dictates an unlikely nobility. It is stirred by his paternity of the child. He returns to Japan to claim the little boy as his own. This double betrayal triggers Butterfly's dagger-wielding demise. Puccini revised the opera numerous times. The fifth revision is known as the standard, although his heroine fares no better than in any of the earlier four. It, along with the concluding acts of La Boheme, is perhaps the most beautifully sensitive of the composer's scores. Puccini composed less frequently, but returned to the stage with The Girl of the Golden West. The opera was commissioned by the Metropolitan Opera, of which Toscanini was then the musical director. It premiered in New York under his direction on December 10th, 1910. Enrico Caruso and Emmy Destin sang the leads and the beautiful second act love duet which Puccini had created for them. This was the first world premiere performed at the Metropolitan Opera. Alrandine is the least known of his mature works. It was originally conceived as an operetta with a lighter tone than of the tragedies that preceded it. He had greater success with the three short operas of El Tritico in 1918 at the Metropolitan. His final masterpiece, Turlendot, was left unfinished at the composer's death. Toscanini conducted the premiere. The last two scenes were completed by Franco Alfano on notes left by Puccini. Toscanini famously stopped the performance short of the finale with the pronouncement that it was here that the master laid down his baton. Even unfinished, Turnadot was one of Puccini's finest compositions. The conclusion of Act One is spectacular by any measure. Had he finished Act Three, we might have been more persuaded of Prince Kalev's ardour for the icy title character. Many an opera enthusiast has felt that the lovely and tragic Leu was more worthy of the prince's devotion. I have always felt that the immortal longings of Mimi, that were as deep and infinite as the sea, more worthy of my own. Puccini died November 29th, 1924. He was 66 years old.